To install the 50-inch light bar kit on your Polaris Expedition, follow these steps. Start by parking the vehicle on a flat level surface, ensure it is in park, and remove the key. Next, disconnect the battery by removing and retaining the two screws from the front of the driver's seat base. Then slide the front seat and lift up to remove. Now turn the screw to open the cover and lift the cover and slide forward to remove. Next, disconnect the negative cable from the battery to prevent arcing. Then, if equipped with accessory hood rack, remove and set aside. To remove the grill, turn each stud one quarter turn to release the grill. Then pull the top of the grill forward and lift up to remove the grill. Next, pull the rubber straps off the hooks to release the hood. Remove the hood by lifting the hood up. For vehicles equipped with a tip-out windshield, open the windshield and support the weight of the windshield while using the appropriate tool to release the clip at the lower end of the gas spring. Use care when releasing the clip. This clip may spring away from the fitting and may strike objects or become lost. Next, disconnect the bottom of the gas springs and remove the two screws and ball stud from the lower A-pillar trim panel. Then pull the A-pillar trim piece away from the vehicle. Next, remove the outside A-pillar trim or side mirror if equipped by removing the push pin rivet and pulling away from the vehicle. Repeat on the other side. For center dashboard panel removal, open the tip out windshield and remove and retain the three screws and washers. Also remove and retain the windshield base. The panel removal process starts by removing and retaining the two push pin rivets from the center dash panel. Next, remove and keep the panel by lifting the front edge and moving backward. To remove the head unit, remove and retain the two push pin rivets from the top of the head unit. For vehicles without an audio system, they will have a storage bin in place of the head unit. The storage bin is removed in a similar manner to the head unit. Next, pull the top of the head unit away from the dash and lift the head unit up to remove from the dash. Then, disconnect the wiring harness and antenna from the head unit, remove and set aside. To remove the dash cover, start by removing the four dash vent covers by using a pry tool. Pry at the top and bottom cover to remove. Make sure the white clips on the back of the vent covers do not become lost. Next, remove one screw at each side of the dash cover. The doors will need to be fully open to access and remove these screws. Removal of these screws allows the cover to be pulled open in the next step to remove the push pin rivet. Now, carefully pull the plastic cover away from the lower A pillar area and remove one push pin rivet from the side of the dash cover. Next, open the glove box and remove the four push pin rivets from the passenger side of the dash cover. Now, remove the two push pin rivets from the driver's side. Next, remove and retain the five screws at the front of the dash cover. If your vehicle is equipped with upper tweeters, make sure to unplug the tweeters when removing the dash cover. Lift up on the front center of the dash to disengage the two radio retention tabs. To remove the front roof liner, Start by removing and retaining the two screws in rear view mirror assembly, if equipped. Next, remove and retain the two screws to uninstall the dome light. Then, disconnect the dome light from the wiring harness and remove. Set the dome light aside. Now, remove and retain the six screws from the top of the roof liner and the four screws from the front roof liner. Next, remove and retain the front roof liner.
Vehicles that are not equipped with a rear view mirror will have a fifth screw at the front of the roof liner. Also, vehicles equipped with a two passenger cab will have three additional screws near the front of the roof liner. Then remove and retain the two screws and set the speaker aside. Remove the rear speakers by disconnecting the wiring harness. Repeat on the other side. Then remove the nine screws from the middle roof liner and set aside. To remove the front roof screws, start by removing and retaining the five screws from the underside of the roof. Then remove and retain all of the screws, spacers, and washers from each side of the roof. For better access, remove rack platform from the vehicle. Next, remove and retain the three weld nuts from each side of the roof underside. Now, use an appropriate tool to prop up the roof. Next, carefully remove the side cover near the opening at the ROPS bottom. Then, to install the harness, start by routing the harness through the upper grommet. Feed it through the dash and bring it across towards the opening in the lower ROPS on the driver's side. Next, attach a wire to the harness and feed into the ROPS, pulling gently towards the opening at the top of the ROPS. Use caution to avoid damaging the harness connector. If the vehicle is equipped with a poly windshield, remove the upper windshield mounting hardware to avoid interference between the harness and screw inside the A-pillar tube. Next, feed the wiring harness through the ROPS A-pillar while watching for the end to appear in the opening above the driver's side window area and pull through the opening in the ROPS. A pick or hook can be used to help pull the end of the harness through the opening. Now, pull the harness through the A-pillar until connectors at the dashboard end of the harness line up. Then secure the harness to the frame with push dart clips. Reference the written instructions for exact locations. Then, push the harness push darts into holes at locations 3 and 11. Install the push dart for the relay into the hole at position L. Now connect the harness to the Polaris pulse bar. Next, remove the switch cover from the appropriate opening in the dash and pull the harness through the opening. Now, connect the switch to the harness and push the switch into the opening until it seats with an audible click. Then, clip the harness to the mounting point behind the head unit opening. Reference the written instructions for exact locations. To prepare the roof for the light bar mounting, locate the two dimples on each front corner of the roof. Drill a quarter inch hole in both dimples. To avoid injury, ensure the rack is secure or removed completely from the roof. Then locate the drill point for the grommet behind the driver's side eyebrow feature and drill a 1 8 inch hole. Now measure the grommet to determine the size hole you'll need to fill. The grommet may already be installed on the light bar wiring harness. Next, use the appropriately sized drill or hole saw to expand the grommet pilot hole to the correct size for the grommet. To assemble the light bar mounts, begin by installing screw heads and sockets in the end of the light bar. Also, assemble the bracket over the screw heads. The bracket will click into the end of the light bar. Repeat on the other side. Next, assemble the mount, two washers, and two nuts to the end of the light bar. Do not torque at this time. Next, install the T-washer that was previously removed from the front roof screw holes. Install the T-nut underneath the roof. Repeat on the other side. Now position the light bar on the roof and install the bolt on the light bar bracket. If the vehicle is equipped with the platform roof rack, do not use the provided washer. Now install two screws in the front mounting holes. Then install washers and nuts on the front screws.
Torque to specification. Next, remove any object propping up the roof. Make sure the roof is lying flat. Next, fasten the screw into the roof. Torque to specification. Next, push the light bar wiring harness through the hole and place the grommet around the light bar harness and install the grommet into the hole. It may be necessary to slit the grommet to enable the harness connector to fit through the grommet. Now, connect the light bar harness to the vehicle harness. Next, clip the edge clip to the vehicle roof. Now, install five screws in the underside of the roof and torque to specification. Next, reconnect the windshield wiper motor if equipped. To install the rear roof liner, begin by installing the nine retained screws. Next, connect the wiring harness to the speaker. The top of the speaker has a shape that engages the space in the ROPS. Make sure the speaker is fully seated in this space before installing the screws. Torque to specification. To install the front roof liner, begin by installing six screws in the top of the roof liner and four screws in the front of the roof liner. Torque to specification. Next, connect the wiring harness to the dome light. Then install the dome light and two screws. Torque to specification. Now install the rear view mirror assembly and two screws. Torque to specification. To install your dash cover, place the front of the dash cover in position and set into place. Then connect the speaker wires if necessary. Make sure the center of the dash is placed in the slots on the vehicle. If the head unit slash storage bin was not removed, make sure these tabs are inserted behind the head unit trim. Next, reinstall the lower front A-pillar cover. Then, install five fasteners on the top of the dash. Next, install two pushpin rivets on the driver's side of the dash cover. Now, install four pushpin rivets on the passenger side of the dash cover. Then, install the four dash vent covers. Push them evenly at the top and bottom to install. Next, install one push pin rivet on each side of the dash. Now, install one screw at each side of the dash. Torque to specification. To install the head unit, begin by connecting the wiring harness and antenna to the head unit. Next, put the bottom of the head unit into position by pushing the top of the head unit into the dash. Then, install two pushpin rivets into the top of the head unit. To install the center dash panel, begin by inserting the rear tabs into the dash and then lowering it into position. Then, install two pushpin rivets. If the vehicle is equipped with a tip-out windshield, install the base, the three screws and washers, Torque to specification. To reinstall the left sail panel, push the front edge of the outer sail panel inward and turn toward the rear. Next, install the push pin rivet in the back side of the left front fender. To install the lower A pillar trim, begin by putting the lower A pillar trim in position at the base of the A pillar. Then install three screws. For vehicles with a tip out windshield, Install two screws and a ball stud. Torque to specification. Next, 
We turn the clip at the bottom of the gas spring to the engaged position and connect the bottom of the gas spring. Then, remove any windshield support and close the tip-out windshield. To install the hood, begin by putting the tabs on hood through the openings in the under hood liner. Then lower the hood into position. Next, pull the rubber straps down over the hooks to secure the hood. Now, put the tabs on the grill through the openings in the front fascia and push the top of the grill into proper position. Then, push each stud in and turn one quarter turn clockwise to secure the grill. Next, reinstall the hood rack, if equipped, by engaging the four latches. Next, reconnect the negative battery cable to the battery. Now, push the battery cover rearward and lower it into place and turn the screw to close the cover. Next, put the seat in place and push rearward to engage the seat. Lower the front of the seat into place and install the two retained screws at the front of the seat base. Torque to specification. Finally, test the light bar by pressing the switch on top of the light bar switch. Loosening the mounting screws on each end of the light bar will help with adjusting its position. Torque to specification. For more information, see your authorized Polaris dealer or visit Polaris.com.